what they're not wanting you to know. Hey guys, how are you doing today? Hope you're doing well. And I'm back with another video, just some things that were coming up today to talk about um, for you today. And so just doing some writing on that. Um, and it's just kind of talking about, you know, things that maybe you wouldn't put together um, if you're kind of in the human construct, because of course uh, you do have that levels of awareness. And when you're in that human construct, to kind of be able to put these pieces together, uh, which is comes into like the separation of who we are and versus the oneness of source, right? And so you are only gonna understand it from the perception that you're in. So if you're in the human concepts, you're not gonna understand it from the broader view of anything. And so it may not be true to you, but it's true on a, another universal level, awareness and knowledge, right? And so, the world view is different than yours, right? And so your view is only a compressed version of who you are as human consciousness. And that's why a lot of us may not understand it from that perspective or understanding. But once you are out of the human consciousness, you'll be able to, to understand more of the information that's coming out in the world. And, um, Again, you, you may not be open to it or aware of, of it um, because we've only practiced what we know as who we are as on this conscious level of the human being, right? And which serves a purpose at that point, but then at evolution, we transition and transform out of that, right? And so that is just part of the human evolution. Like we go from the unconscious to the conscious and then back again, back and forth on different levels of awareness until we were fully open and aware onto a level where we can understand and see things from different views. And that's evolution, again, of the human consciousness and awareness, right? And so when we limit ourselves to the constructs of just being human, we're limiting ourselves on that level of being, right? And so there's many beings of levels of awareness that we can attain in this lifetime, which is the potential to be something else other than what we were being now in the moment that we are in, right? And so being where we are is not always where we're going to be later in life, right? And so, because we're always evolving, right? And it's kind of like, okay, you may recognize within yourself, you know, you were a whole different person when you were a kid. You're a different person when you are um, in a, a teen, and then you're a different person when you're a young adult, and then later in life, right? You evolve, right? So that's conscious on different levels, and that's just an example of what I'm talking about. It's not just that but we're evolving on so much more on a different level of consciousness higher consciousness um uh, with source right and so constructs have been put in place as part of the separation game that we're living and so that's kind of what i'm going to talk about here so the world of separation or if you want to call it the the land of illusion which is what we're living in when we're at, not in the con when we're in the false illusion of separateness from source, right? The divine connection, which is the creation of all things, right? And so you're the creator of your life within the creation of all things because you're a part of it. That's creating the reality that we're living in and we're intermixing and playing with the other people and parts in this world, like a chess game or a board or whatever you want to, to game that we're playing. We're a part in it, significant part in the play. And what we're doing and choosing, because we have the keys to life, we get to choose what we want to do and participate in. It brings about that evolution of it. And so change is the way that we make things different. So when we can change things, we're able to take our power back and bring in things that we want versus what we don't want. And so the old way to the new way, right? And so the expansion of awareness on that level brings in about change to help us manifest things that we want. And so we don't want to just manifest. If you learn a manifesting, okay, these universal laws are important, right? And so let's just go there for a moment. They're important because they are universal for a reason. You can apply them to everyday life, right? And so a lot of people just think of manifesting as a house or a car or a lover. But you use these to manifest and create and learning the basics of manifesting, which 
they've taken out of school systems, which we need to be put back in the school. We need these things to be put back in our life on every level, right? Whether it's re our spiritual beliefs, our religion, our medicine, things like that, because these are universal laws that are important, but they've taken them out because of the human construct that they want you to play a role in a part in this game that has been created of this system, this hierarchy system of, you know, the governments and, and, you know, all the way down, that trickles down, but they've taken it out for a reason because they want you to play that game, not this game, who we are, <laughs> what we came to create, what we want to do with our lives, right? And so it is an interference in what we're doing in our lives to bring and manifest things that we want. But we want to learn, and I don't really want to go into all that, but um, what we want to learn is how to manifest in our lives, right? And so using these universal laws and manifesting, you know, not just for manifesting a car or things like that, but you can use all these laws, you know, if you're trying to get healthy, if you're trying to, you know, start something or do something, manifest a business, if you're trying to do a lot of different things, you can use them on all levels of your life, not just certain things, right? That's why they're called universal. Um, you use them. These are the keys of life, the true keys of life. It's not going to some church and sit there to listen to somebody preach to you and put you down because you're a sinner. <laughs> that is part of the separation world, right? The illusion, the land of illusion, or the world of separation, however you want to call it. This is set up on the matrix to be a place of separation where you get to experience outside of who we truly are, which is source, right? Divine connection to source, which is God. God to ourselves. We have the tools and the keys to, you know, maneuver and ma manipulate this world how we want it. And But if we're playing the game of separation we're playing their game, right? And so kind of look at it that way. And I've talked about this, you know, in other videos too as well. So I'm just going to give you a little bit about what I had channeled in the writing. But basically, this is everything that's kind of, you know, coming into play. And, you know, when I was, um, I was a kid, I watched that one movie with Billy Crystal, where he was went away to like, go find himself, right? <laughs> and this was a really cool movie because he said the one thing. It's the one thing. And what is that one thing? It's you. You're the one. You're the God. You're the source. You're the divine connection. You're the creator. It's the one thing. It's you. And it, as as life went on, I kept like, what? Is, and that would just keep popping into my head. What does he mean by what is the one thing? What is the one thing? And like when I had my awakening stuff and I was like, ah, oh, I get it. You know, and so it all kind of made sense. Like it was something that came into my life to start helping me to plant the seed. Like, what is that one thing? It's you. You're the creator of your own world, your own reality. You're your own source, your own God, your own guidance. You're you're connected directly to source. You're the one. You're the one thing. Nothing outside of you is the one thing, right? So I hope that makes sense. Right, and so that was another thing that came in today is to talk about you are the one thing. You are it, right? It's not anything outside of you. That's the constructs that we're creating and other people are creating. You know, other people had put these things in place, you know, and so when you're not in your own full power and awareness, you are participating in theirs, right? And so to make change, you want to step within your own power, which is you, and to bring source into alignment with you, in everything in your life and that was the other thing put start putting source back into your life right nothing outside of you just you because you are the one right put source back within your life on every level that you're doing and it's not about going to church or religion it's about your divine connection to source on every level you know my relationships you know uh, my my career um put source back into that because when we take it out, we become dead. And that kind of talks about this in the, the writing, right? And so what happens when we become dead? There's no life in it. Source is life. That's our divine connection. That's our power. That's our plug-in. Abraham Hicks talks about that, right? And so that's our plug-in. And when we're able to step out of the human conception, we can bring this all together and we will understand it on a, a different level than when we are actually in the human consumption because that's ignorance, right? It's, it's separation. It's on the full level of separation when you're in your human concept. You're in your ego, your faultiness, your, you know, and even like 
when we're connecting to the collective. You know, the collective is everything that has ever been in existence. It's not source. Your collective, the collective is collective consciousness, what everybody's thought, done, been, we created. And so that's where we can pop into and get the information from and draw that in because I've had the experience where one person on one end of the world says one thing and then a person on the other world says something on, on this, says the same thing from a different part of the world and they don't know each other, but they are pulling from the same collective consciousness, the same thing. And they're saying the same thing, but you know, that's the collective, it's like a cloud of information that we've all been heard of, thought, believed in, created. It's the collective consciousness. It's like a cloud, right? And so you have to get past the cloud to get to divine. And so that's within you, who you are. So bring source in through the cloud, um, clear all that stuff away and have your own divine connection, right? Because we can have our false truth and our real truth, right? Our real truth is source truth because there's only one truth. And then we can have the collective, which is the false truth. It's what everybody else has been thought and have created throughout the whole existence of human consciousness or whatever this, you know, this realm is that you want to call it, whether it's the world of separation or the, the land of illusion. Um, but we're living in either of these realms at any point of time within our existence here, right? So anyway, it says, um, the world of separation or land of illusion exists as they are, which is to experience the freedom of not being our own true selves. So it exists on many different levels <clears throat> of awareness from who we are and who we are to become, which is the dynamics of self plagiarism. So we're being false to ourselves where um, it's plagiarism is what they're calling it. So they take source out of everything and separate it, which is separation from itself. So if you get caught up in it, and then you experience it, which is of the creation that you're creating because you're the creator of your life, not the creation, because creation's already been created. You've already been created. You've already been thought of. You've been already been taken into consideration that you're going to be here at this point, at this time, showing up in your reality to help manipulate the expansion of the, of the worlds or yourself and who you think you're being, right, if, if that makes sense. So we're either of the collective or we're of source. Right, the consciousness, what's on this evolutional level here in the 3D, right? And so it is what, what many call the matrix, right? And so we become more or more of, not less than when we engage in it, we believe to be true, which is only factual to you, which generates an illusion based on attraction of realization, uh, not self-realization which is the practice of self, ignorance, not intelligence, right? Because all is intelligence. Everything has an intelligence on a certain level of practicality of what it's being in this realm. So <clears throat> like a tree is a tree, plant is a plant, it knows and it does its thing as part of the universal contracts, right? Of what they're being on that level of awareness. And so, so are you, you're being at that level of awareness that you are being with that contract of what you've taken up and agreed to when you come here in this form, this reality, right? And so you're playing that role, right? So, so it's based on a false illusion when you take out source from everything, meaning there's nothing. So when you take source out, there's nothing, it's dead to the world. It's just existing as it is, whatever it's created. Right? Source is the life that's within form, not the form that is without, if that makes sense. <clears throat> and so it is nothingness, which is what I actually went through when I, um, when I was going through that. It was like emptiness is what I'm going to use the word for. So it's more about emptiness. And then, so like with my experience, and I've mentioned that before in some of the videos, that it was like an emptiness. And um, uh, Buddhism talks about emptiness in a, in a way. And so for me, um, emptiness that I'm talking about is like the emptiness of something like a belief system, like it's, it's a falseness, it's a true, it's a true to what you believe it to be, but once you're there, it becomes empty, so it no longer exists. It's not, 
it's not real. It's an illusion. It's a delusion. So I went through, went through that experience. So like when I was, you know, believing I was, I was going to have, you know, this degree and then I was able to get there and then I was married and then I went to the, um, uh, like the, the shower and all this big facade that you that we make of it you know this perception or this reality that we believe it to be and then you get there and then it's it's like what was that for what was that it was empty right it, it's emptiness it has no meaning it's just the purpose that you give to it to it's like a drive that brings you there and so it's suffering right and so that's what the buddhists kind of talk about it's suffering so i went through all these this is what led to my oh, um, my death experience was all these constant slams of emptiness one after the other and it just kept repeating after and after with everything on every level of my life because it was a facade <laughs> right and so that's what um, I was going through and that's what kind of led me to my awakening was the understanding that it's nothingness right and so it is what I went through when I gained the awareness and the insight that um, what it's like to be like but not to be it which is the experience you know like i said of emptiness and separation of true reality um so it <laughs> instead of being um being me it was like this thing i was trying to be in this experience and having all this and so when that was taken away it was like suffering it was like you know what was that for you know it just it had no no real solidity no um, no purpose. So everything that we are living here is just an experience. It's not real, right? And everything that you're doing is not real. And I hate to burst your bubbles, but that's where your suffering comes from. You think that you're an identity and a per, you know, this perception reality that you're living and that you're becoming something and that because you get married, you own a person or because you belong to something or someone, but it's, it's not true. <laughs> you know, it's a facade that they teach you and preach you as part of the separation of being here. Right, and so we are the witness to ourselves of being in that which is experienced. So there is a separation going on in this moment of who you are, right, and who you are not, which is both built on a belief system that you're putting into the play. What what is <laughs> what are the roles that I'm playing? Um, and a lot of people are like, oh well, I'm the mother, I'm the father, I'm the brother, I'm the sister, I'm the, the sibling, I'm the uh, the mates, but you're not. It's just an identity, ego, right? Like, I, I don't, I have the person who born me, yes, but she's not my mother because when she dies and I die, we're not mother and daughter on the other side of the realm. That's just an illusion what we're doing here. There's no, and, and this was, you know, it was a great thing for me to have these people who gave, gave birth to me um, because a lot of what, even though it wasn't on um, the level that I probably would have wanted it, but it was the level that I needed it because that's where my awakening came from, right? Because of what they, the, the parents that I took up to create the awakening. So everything is, it has a divine purpose. So whatever, we may not realize it in, in the moment when we're playing at the role in this concept, but before we come in, we, we make this plan. And so we are, to we're attracted to the parents that we're having for the purpose of what we're our soul is needing to expand and work on and wake up from right and so i couldn't had better parents for that you know what i mean um and so that's what kind of led to my awakening right and so how can you how can you be mad at that right and it's not that um you know, a lot of people talk about, well, I can't forgive, but okay, but what was the experience and what did you learn from it, right? And so when you have the aha moment, like you, you should be thankful when you look back, right? I'm glad I had that because then I wouldn't be where I am now. And so that's what it is for me with the parents' situation, right? Even though it wasn't something that, you know, a lot of people get to experience, oh, the love and this and that and that. It, and it wasn't any of that, and so I wouldn't have had it any other way, right? And so to be a part of the play, because I wouldn't be here doing what I'm doing now, 
and the expansion the awareness that I have, the understanding. So to be a part of the play, we are separate from itself, such as the human, the religions, the beggar, the sinner, the illusion, uh, the people, the identity, the son, the daughter, the father figure, right? And so when all is one, so it's all one, right? This is just a temporary station of experiencing and being, expanding our awareness, having the understanding because we wanted to know, right? We wanted the knowledge. And so what was created for us to have the knowledge? The expansion of consciousness, right? And so what does that mean? You have to be separate from yourself in order to have that. So we all signed up for this, right? So we've all wanted this, right? So how can you, even though it has duality, right? Which really isn't duality. <laughs> it's one of this and one of that, which the book talks about. So even though we have that side of it, you know, how can we be, you know, um, I guess I don't want to say like negativity against it, but non-acceptance of it, right? And not, you know, and suffering against it because it's all in divine purpose, right? Who wanted the knowledge, right? This wouldn't have been created if we didn't want the knowledge for expansion. Anyway, which is a play in life and the return to source, not the center of earth, but yourself. You are the one return to the center of yourself, right? And so that's kind of why I have the, um, the channel that I have. That's why it's the name of that, right? I am center of learning and living. The I am, which is source, the, the center, center of living and learning, right? Because I am. Uh, so the collective is a validation of where you've been and how you are, which is being now when you're connecting to others. It's not who you are when you were connecting to source, which is different. But it's the one way, the one path, which is anything which anything, there are many, which is the difference in being one, too, that is or is not of itself, right? And so um, a lot of people think there's many paths to source, but there's actually only one path, right? There's many paths to get you from where you are to where you're going, but there's only one path to source, and that's within. For instance, you know, you can take the path of meditation, Right? You can take the path of yoga, you can take this path, you can take that path, you can take religion path. But at some point, it's going to, it'll lead you back to the one path which is within. So because the only way to get connected to source is within yourself. It's not outside of yourself. So when we take a path that we're believing, like religion or whatever it is, to get there, we're going to go along that path, we're going to learn things, we're going to pick up things, we're going to understand things from that path which brings it all back to the one source, right, anyway. So there's many different paths, but there's only one path to source, which is within. It's all going to make you turn back within yourself. And it really depends on what that is, right? And so it may be uh, through suffering, it may be through awareness, it may be through happiness and joy or bliss or whatever it is that's going to take you there, but it's all going to lead you back to yourself, right? It's coming back to you, and you're the one. And so when you place something else in the way of it, which is source, it takes you off onto another course, or should we say another path, from one path leads you to another path, to another path, back to yourself, which is a separation in of itself, which is divided amongst many. So it is this way not, and so it is done this way, so, and many may not figure this out. If you're stuck in the human consciousness, you may not be able to see it from this perspective and awareness that you are it, um, you are the consciousness, you're the awareness, you're the awareness of itself, you are the awareness of the one being, you're the awareness of who it is that you are, where you are on different levels of, of, of being existing in this reality, right? And so everything comes back to you, right? And so they will stay the path of suffering their own being if they're not in alignment with their true selves. And so we say to you to stay the course of being you, not others, not following others, not standing out, waving for others to come and join you on your path, <laughs> but to be yourself, right? Your own guidance, your own guidance star, right? And of course, others will tell you it is the way, but it isn't. And 
And so, yes, you can go on their path. Um, eventually, it'll lead you back to yours because eventually that'll fall away. Something will arise and you'll fall away from it. Um, and then you'll join back on to the path that you're needing to go, right? And so it's kind of like when you're going down a highway, you have these little off ramps, <laughs> kind of say, and you're going off and getting your information coming back onto the off ramp. And so basically that's what's, what's that saying? Because even if you follow somebody else, it's not your path, it's their path. Because everybody has their own path, their own way to get back to themselves, right? And so other people are like, oh, well, you know, I found my path. And this is how it's done when in reality you have to find your own way, right? And so you can use other, <clears throat> other people's way as like a guide and tool, but it's not the way back if that makes sense. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so, um, like when you're, when you're on that path, right? If you're taking it, you're taking it, but it's not the way for you because you have your own specific path and way and the book, talk, book talks about that. Um, it's only set up for you to officially get to your own way which is through you again back to you who you are with your divine connection not their path even though it can lead you to it but it's not going to be it right and so you always want to come back to yourself right and i i've time i've taken a lot of turns and turns you know learning this learning that and learning that and so having gathered all that information i can see it from a different viewpoint and then what i would have probably seen it from in my human conception before the awakening. I was, I tell people I lived under a rock, <laughs> you know, before my awakening. I was in this consumption of humanness, like, ugh, such suffering. But from the path of where and when I went on, it had the awakenings, the emptiness, you know, of everything that had resulted from that human consciousness. It was empty. And so that's what led to my awakening. And this is what I'm talking about. All of that that I was trying to be out, out of my outside world, you know, the the marriage, the kids, the family, the house, the per profession, you know, my my career, you know, led me to enough sustainable suffering that led to my awakening, then my death experience, and then the path to myself. And now I am where I am, right? And so your outside will bring you back around and trying to follow other people and not myself listening to myself if that makes sense you need to listen to yourself your internal guidance not other people right and so that's what led me back to where i am right and kind of shedding all that and then working on myself for the 10-year period as i mentioned before and then now here i am like i have this more expanded version of awareness and everything that i went through right and so that's that's evolution of consciousness, right? And so as you're going through, and what I'm, I am now, where I am now, is gonna to be totally different than I am in t probably 20 more years from now, right? And so keep going in that direction. And so I always plant the seed for myself, you know, to constantly be connected, come back to myself, centered, um, working on myself, and then gauging myself. Am I following others or am I following my inner guidance? Am I planting the seed for myself to expand my awareness, to constantly expand. And those are the seeds that I'm planting that I want to evolve my consciousness. I'm planting my own seeds for my own evolution, right? So nobody needs to pray for me. Nobody needs to do anything for me. I am awareness to this point in my life where I'm planting my own seeds. I want to be more conscious than I am today as I evolve. And so that may take me on more trips through evolution uh, so I can be there, right? And so my goal is to be more divinely connected to my true self and source, not to the world that I'm living in, navigating here uh, as an outside force, right? Because you're either living within yourself and being a presence onto the world, or you're allowing the world to manipulate you and be a part of the world when you're not in alignment or in your own power driving your life and it's kind of like and I, I explained this to to, um, to someone 
And I said, it's kind of like riding a horse, right? And you're on this horse and you got the reins and you're either allowing the horse take you wherever it wants to, or you got the reins and you're driving the horse to where you want it to go, right? And that's life, basically, right? just as in a scenario, right? And so we say to you to stay the course of being not being you, not others, not following others, not standing out, waving for others to come your way, but to be of yourself, understanding your understanding yourself and your knowledge, your own wisdom, your internal guidance system. Understanding what your internal guidance system is, is going to help you on your path, right? In the expansion of who you are and where you are to the next level. And of course, others will tell you that it is the way, but it isn't. So stay focused on who you are, which is the way for you for you are it was and it was created for you to be of who you are not another right um and so even though there's a lot of suffering in this world it's and it's part of separation it's there t for you it's not against you but we tend to see it's against us and others are against us and it may come across that what i'm talking about is that you know, this is going against your grain, but if you're directly connected with source, you'll be able to see what I'm speaking versus, you know, that it's directly against your beliefs and things like that. But in reality, it's both, right? Because the world, even though there's the suffering, it's, it's for us because we are the change in the world, right? We're the ones that change it. We're the ones that make up what we want to live and, and have and, and exist in it, you know, and if you're about war and suffering and taking over others who are actually part of the universe too, because when you're in war with another person fighting, you're their source, your source, we're all source. So why are you fighting them? Like have that consciousness and awareness. Like, what are you doing? You're in the human concepts, right? When you're, when you're acting that way, right? But it's all here for us to, bring us back to ourselves, to seek and to search. Because when we're in suffering, what are we going to do? We're going to seek and search for a way. And we may turn to ways that aren't helpful, like if you turn to drugs to escape, or you're going to turn to yourself, or you might commit suicide, or whatever the situation is. But you, we're always going back to source for whatever, regardless of what it is, right? And it's expansion of awareness of where we are with it. Right. And so understanding that and it gives you examples here. It gave me some examples. So like Christianity. Right. Because they take they take source out of everything. And that's part of this, the world of separation. Right. The illusion. Um, so for like Christianity, they take source out of it and put in a God um, for their religion. And they put in a middleman, which is the preacher of the gospel that tries to teach you of certain things that are limitation, not expansion. Right. To tell somebody they're a sinner is limitation, right? And what does that do to you? It brings your energy down, your vibration down. It makes you feel bad about yourself, not lift you up. And so to listen to them preach, you know, to, and then you preach to their God, which is a false prophet. And what is prophet? Prophet from being. You profit, you profit, which is you get something from it right? From being there is no evidence. And so there's no evidence also of Jesus that you pray to, right? Because Jesus, that is not a savior. Jesus isn't a savior. So they put a Jesus and an image of a white person as a false illusion. And what you're doing is you're participating in it because you've lost connection with your own divine self, whether you've accepted it or if you've been forced out of it, whatever religion has gotten you in that direction. Because there's been a lot of harming and killing over it because you didn't have that belief system a long time ago. So however got you into that part, you started believing outside of yourself, right? The separation. And so they give you this false illusion to be a part of, right? It's, it's a replacement than your divine connection, right? And so you're praying to this false illusion, <laughs> which, and like, there's, there's only one source. There's no, there's not many gods, but there's all gods. We're all gods to ourselves, but there's no gods that you be praying to, right? Or worshiping. Um, the only one that is there is yourself, which is divine connection to source, right? But then they put a Jesus there, which is a false prophet um, to profit from, 
right? They make their money, right? Because this Jesus that they put in your way is a savior, which Jesus, the truth Jesus isn't a savior, it's a teacher, right? And so, so their Jesus is a false prophet, so you worship a false illusion, which many don't understand. It's not the same Jesus that lived. It's a false version of it, which is not a savior, but a teacher of the way, right? And so that's what Jesus, the real Jesus, taught was a, a path. He didn't say, come to me and I will save you, <laughs> which, and they say, you know, people say, oh, you need to get Jesus in your life. No. Oh, Jesus will save you. No. And what are you doing? You're waiting for it to be saved instead of taking initiative, right? So, and that saving you is never going to come, <laughs> you know, um, praying, hoping, and waiting just doesn't cut it. And so he didn't save anyone, and he doesn't have the ability to save anyone because he wasn't given that power. And he's not the only son of God you are, and so you are what you believe you are. And so when you start taking yourself out of the picture, you're taking source out of it. So you're allowing yourself to be out of the picture, which is within, outside, right? You're taking what's outside within instead of within out, right? And so you are God to yourself, the creator of your life as a part of the creation that was created by source, uh, which is a liberation. So when you put source back into everything, it comes alive, not dead, right? So you're bringing the aliveness within yourself when you turn within, not at self. Because you're giving, when you turn outside of yourself, you're giving them the power, the life, the energy, the vibration to to thrive while you suffer. Does that make sense? When you turn it back on yourself, you're giving yourself the ability to thrive, not survive. Does that make sense? And so you are dead to yourself when you are not in heaven, which there really isn't a heaven, it's within yourself, which is a direct connection to source. Because there is no true heaven but within yourself, right? Which is separation. And so they took source out of everything for you to be here now in this place, in this time, to have the experiences, which when you take source out of it all, there's... Nothing, it's just existing, running on background programs, existing as you are without the awareness of who you are. And it's just you think you are this, but you're not, and then it leads to emptiness, right? So I've had this experience, so I kind of understand what this is saying. And so out of everything to be a part of the play, which is satanic, right, practice, which there's no Satan or anything like that. It's just the way it's worded. Um, there's no devil or Satan, you know, Um religion, which is a false god, right? So you're just practicing to a false god, a religion, a belief system, and everything else that's here. Because when you take the, the um, what is the wording? When you, when you take this, the source out of religion, it's no longer source. It's just a practice, right? It's, it's an emptiness that you're doing. And you're putting things in place of source, which then becomes your god, that you pray to and you believe in, right? And it kind of talks about that too. And so it isn't until you put it back into everything that it becomes alive and stop relying on others. Insanity, which is also kind of wording, satanic practice, you get your insanity from that, right? Of being the replacement for you. So take your power back. And over time, it has evolved in a way that has caused a lot of turmoil and suffering for many throughout eons, claiming to be enacting indifference. They don't follow their own teachings, which is their practice. You know, religions uh, say, you know, um, be love, but what are they doing, right? They're, they're not practicing love. Uh, governments are saying, you know, uh, one thing, but then they're doing another thing. Um, and it's just understanding that concept, right? And so are they really being their practice or are they just saying and not doing, right? And so medicine, replacing natural herbs um, and holistic healing, which we used to do, we've been taken away from it, which is also now coming back into reality because it's being brought to the forefront. And I had this conversation, you know, yesterday actually at an event I was, because um, I sell crystals and things like that in my book at, at different events as I travel around. Uh, to different places, and so um, not just online um, or you know promoting on these videos, but <laughs> so in fact, I have these books here. 
right? So, and I take information out of here for the videos. But um, we were actually talking, you know, like the Vatican and stuff, they have all this deeper knowledge and wisdom that they don't allow out to the masses. They only let you have little bits and pieces, but they can't keep it forever because the truth evolves, right? The truth will come out in other people in other ways and it'll come out and they can try to keep it and hide it from you, but it's going to come out in people who are channeling and that's why they don't want people doing these things, right? That's why they deemed people who were um, channeling the information, getting it out to the masses, things like that, they wanted to do away with that and you just go to religion, right? And then they had all these compartments, the separation of certain things. And what you were doing, whether you were using herbals to heal, energy to heal, um, channeling information from the divine, bringing that in, that was all separate, separated, taken away, right? And they would burn, hurt, and kill people, murder them, um, force them, torture them, and don't want to go on that path. But anyway, <laughs> that was part of it, the... Um, the separation, you know, of with the religions, you know, how they started to overtake and put these and implement them into place, right? And so when you're practicing these things and you're engaging in them, you're practicing engaging in these energies that took place. You're keeping them alive, right? And believe it or not, if you don't know anything about energy, I suggest you learn about energy and vibration, the natural laws and how things are manifesting and what you're participating in. Right, and so with medicine, they're replacing natural herbs and holistic healing, which is coming back into this time frame, um, and for a reason because we need it. We need to start using these because eventually it's all going to be obsolete. Here, right? They're working on making GMO foods, taking the natural healing powers out of everything and making it all medicine. Right, and if you're participating in it you're replacing that with medicine, right? Then you're part of that evolution. You're helping to create that by buying it by part, you know, instead of coming back to your natural herbs and evolution of what source gave us, right? So they're taking source out of everything that's part of this creation for us, right? So be aware of these things, right? What am I participating in? What am I doing? How am I, how am I helping this to evolve or not evolve? Am I going back to the holistic nature and oneness of all things, our divine connection? When you're meditating every day, you're connecting to source and you're receiving, you're plugging into the universal consciousness of higher consciousness, vibration, energy, which is healing, right? Awareness, not just consciousness, but awareness and healing. When you're taking of the herbs that are natural, that's not toxic and, and you know, um, you're, you're taking in the natural herbs that were given to us, right? And we have a lot of people out there who do talk about that, right? And so all this is coming back to the forefront because at some point, this is going to be all, this is going to be a dead planet, right? So do you really want to participate in that? Because um, at some point, it's just going to be like the Walking Dead version, and I don't want to get into that part because that's a whole other rabbit hole that people go on, but I'm not going there. Um, but I can understand what they're saying because I have the knowledge that I have right now. So when you take source out of everything, you know, the plants and you make it GMO, and you're creating these different versions of things and that is separate from source. You're not, it's not, it's an illusion, right? And so then um, <clears throat> by taking source out, you're taking out the life of everything the herbs and the life and the plants, and pretty soon it's all going to be like dead. Just, uh, it's going to exist, but it's going to exist on a, on a level that life isn't because it's already taking out of a lot of things already. But you're not able to see that if you're in the human conception, um, that you're confined to that limited viewpoint um, that you haven't waken up from yet, right? And so as you keep relying on them, you're making them your God. When you're having the separation, you're making... Um, uh, whoever you're placing source with, you're making that your God. Instead of yourself, the God, directly connected to source, right? Which is a limitation, not an expansion of awareness. And, and it keeps you ill and sick and even getting worse because when you're taking medications, it has adverse reactions, right? And so if you haven't read the bottle, 
I, I would recommend you read the bottle. And so it may fix one thing, but it's going to deteriorate something else because it's not a natural fix. It's not what we're supposed to use in place of source, right? And many say, well, you know, it does help me in my life, but you know what? It doesn't fix the problem. It's a temporary solution. It can be helpful in certain things, but some things, no. I mean, look what you're doing when they say you have cancer, right? And so when that's developing, that's an energetic thing that's developing from a point of seed planted to something physical that's manifesting that's never been resolved. And so if you understand healing and energy, which I needed to go through in order to understand this, it's manifesting because you didn't deal with the situation. So it becomes solidified in the physical form that you're taking up. And when you're creating that and you're believing in it, like I'm fighting this and I'm fighting that and I'm fighting this, you know, the cancer and blah, blah, blah. You're actually adding to the energy and that no wonder it's spreading, <laughs> right? So the expansion of awareness of that is going from person to person and they're creating that because then they, now they have the fear and then the doubt and the worry and then they're, that's the trigger point for that to happen and expand within them. And so then they're creating that within themselves and they're around their belief in it, right? And so it just evolves, right? These are the different paths that take off from one little seed that's been planted. But when you're adding things like chemotherapy, the rest of your body is breaking down while you're trying to take it to resolve one thing, right? And then you may have another issue and then maybe you will pass over, right? If you don't have it within yourself to know and understand all these things, Right? It's, it's more than what you're believing. So when you're putting a doctor or something in your place of your divine connection, you are making them your God. Right? And so when you're putting these things in place, you can have like your divine connection or you can have other people be your, your God right? Um, and that's fine. It's just your path where you are. And I mean, if that's something you need to go through to learn and have the understanding awareness of it, then, you know, that is your path. But if you have the awareness and knowledge and to turn in, you're going to get the healing from yourself, the answers to what you're needing and what to do um, is versus outside of yourself. So for instance, like, I was in working at this place inside a building. They started doing construction, which was causing dust and fumes and everything in, in the building, which um, I was starting to like start to have this cough from it, right? And so instead of going to a doctor to get medication, I turned in, and, and this is after the awakening, because I knew better, I knew more than what other people know. Not that I'm better, but then I have more of an understanding. So. I question source. I was like, so what is what is it that I can use that will help me uh, with this? You know, as because I had to work and I had to be in the building, right? And so, kind of, I mean, I could have quit my job <laughs> or say I'm taking time off till you know. But um, at the point, like I self supporter of myself, right? So I'm here having to work, right? And so what? The information when I meditate on it was to get anise, right? So anise oil. So hot water, put a cloth over your head, inhale, and that would clear up everything. Because what does anise do? I didn't even know anything about that. And when I got that, I researched it. And that's what it was. You can get all the information from your divine connection of source, what you're needing. And these are all plants that are here on the earth for you to use for healing on a physical level manifesting that into your life right by just connecting and receiving the divine connection that you have with source and it, all the information will come to you what you're needing to heal but we listen to other people that are believing that you know you need this and you need this medicine you need this medicine to heal when it's not right now just take a look at the COVID situation not really on that path but some are saying, oh, well, you know, they had a, a cure within hours after. No, they had it set up, right? So <laughs> that was something that was created, let out into the world. And then, of course, they came out with a cure because they already had it, right? And so they didn't come up with the cure, right? Because if that's the thing, if you can come up with a cure 
right away for something like that, then why can't you come up with it for like cancer or something? Like, come on, you got to be real. Like, right? You got to really think about these things. That's why we have a brain in the human realm, right? To really contemplate and think about these things. So, but I don't want to go off on that path because I don't really <laughs> like to go on those, those ventures. But anyway, in the school, you know, they, they don't, the only churches teach you certain things in school, read, write, history, things like that. But that's to get you into the human realm. They take source out of that too. Um, they take out learning about the laws of the universe, the consciousness, the uh, laws of manifesting, the world, uh, the laws that we're under, you know, and you have the, um, the human laws, you know, and there's no, it, that's not being taught. It's all been taken away, right? So you can live in this, the world of separation, the world of illusion um, here. But when you're able to step out of that, you're able to see like, oh, I get it. You know, you're, you're getting all this understanding and this awareness come in when you're divinely connected to yourself and you find yourself, right? Because when I was able to step away from all that outside of myself, I found myself. You have to die to yourself to find yourself, if that makes sense. You have to, you have to die to your human self to find your true self, right? That's the false ego and the true ego, or not the true, the, the false self and the true self, right? You're who you truly are. Right, divine connection to source, right? Um, so they replaced your divine connection with the religions when you should be doing yoga, med meditation, and working on your intuitive abilities. These are all things that help you to connect to your um, divine connection, which is source, right? And so again, when you take source out of the picture, it becomes obsolete. And so that's where it's going if we don't change this evolution of the direction that it's going in. And it's it's operative, but it can become an operative, right? And so what that's meaning is that we're able to change and transform the life that we're living now in this time frame and of the reality and go into a different direction. And kind of like Abraham talks about it, it's kind of like stopping a train to get into another train, right? And you have to slow it down and direct it into another one. But we can do that into the opposition of it, which is the track that it's going which was set in time and place a long, long time ago. And it's just continuing. We're continuing the evolution, right? It's just something that's continuing to go because we're participating in it. And I did a video on that. If you don't want it, don't participate in it. When you can stop participating in it, the matrix falls down because there's nothing there to keep it running and nothing there to keep it going. It's just emptiness, right? And so when you start participating in something, it falls. Now, whether that's part of the, the government, the religions, um, the wars, if you put all your guns down, who's going to fight the war? It's going to be between the two people who want the war, and you're letting them battle it out. Why would you start a war and then want other people to fight it for you? Right? These are conditions that we're set on to be a part of this play and role. But when you have the awareness and you step outside of the constructs of that, you're able to see what I'm talking about. This makes sense if you really look at it, right? So think about it. Um, so when you start to, you know, just question yourself, what am I participating in? What am I making still go? When, when this whole evolution is just a result of what happened and started a long time ago, and it's just something that keeps evolving in different ways, right? And so the conditioned state just evolves unless you let it go and let it let it go away. So when we take source out of everything, it becomes obsolete. And that is the purpose of those who wear the crown, right? And so, <laughs> right, so the crown, not of your crown here, but of those up in the governments and things like that, which they're trying to make it obsolete. So if they take source out of everything, it's just a system that you're living in, which is the creation of nothing. It's just a false illusion that you're coming here to experience in. Right? It's just, it doesn't exist. And I know that's hard to say because you're existing in it, but it doesn't exist only when you participate in it. <laughs> um, so just like your illusions, your thoughts, your beliefs, right? I'm fat when you're really skinny. You know, I'm poor when you're really abundant. You know, it, it's really what you're thinking, you're believing in, right? Um, it, it, it's it's, it's interesting, it just, you know, when you meditate and start working on yourself and you tune in, you're going to understand this more on a different level. 
And then what happens when you take source out, you become dead inside. And so you forget who you are because you become so separate from it. And then you're like, okay, you replace it, something with it, because you have nothing now, right? And so you step out of your power. You become a follower, <laughs> not a leader in your own life. And you're not a participant in your life. You're a conscious construct of what's existing already that's been put in place a long time ago, not your present moment. You're of the past, not the future. You're not even of the present moment. But when you're in the present moment, divinely connecting, you're creating a new existence onto the world in the future. So to get out of the past, you have to be in the present to be of the future of something else new that's being created in a new world, in a new way. Existence. Of existence. I'm trying to spit that out. And so then what happens when you take source out, you become dead inside, you forget who you are, you step out of your power, you become a follower, a lower vibration, which is intended by those above you, which leads to separation, suffering, illness, and disease, right? So they have you covered, right? They have your spiritual, they have your, this is how you are in society, this is how you are in school, this is how you are to be a part of this, so these are your jobs, and they put these careers out there for you to take and then to get in debt and then to owe money. And that it's just all this like building blocks of this societal system that they put in place for you to participate when they take source out of it, right? And that's the human conception of a false reality, the framework. And so when you add a back source to everything, you're taking your power back. You become alive in it because you are part of it in this body, which is the framework of itself being one to that which is the divine connection of source for source created us all because we are one which is why you why would you negate it and take others over yourself so that's the other question right and says this is the question why would you take others over yourself when you were you yourself is the creation of source and the one who been put in power over yourself so why would you take somebody else over your own self right? Trust in your own faith, which is to be steady in yourself, not others, for you are of great faith when you take your power back. You stand in your power. So stop continually relying on others outside of yourself for your own salvation and realizing uh, and the realiz realization of being one connected to source. So take back your power. Believe in yourself, right? And so you're not your religion. You're not your medicine. You're not your ops obsessions, you're not your ignorance, you are these things because you stepped away from your own divine knowing. And you cut yourself off by believing in others over source, which is one, one to all things. But in the human concept, you are separate from it. And so when you remove source from the picture, you take others over as your God, the one being, the one true being, the one love, the one source. Right? which is a step away from the divine truth. So when you're not in your divine truth, your divine connectedness, there's always something there to catch you, right? which is the fall. That's your nets. You have a backup plan. Right? Plan A, plan B. Plan C and D if you need it. <laughs> right? um, and I go over that. There's different... Um, levels you have your divine and then you have your um your separateness and then different le there's a couple different levels that i've written about and channeled from there right and so that's a step away from the divine truth and so you get back to stepping away from those things that you allow to get in your way of the divine connection so stop you know the tv the doctors the religions the systems that are in place and connect yourself because you can have all the information here if you have cancer Meditate and ask source, what is your healing? Don't ask a doctor because they don't know. They're just healing based on your symptoms. And your symptoms is the result of what actually caused the problem. If you get to the root cause of the problem, you can pull that seed, change it, transform it, because you can only manipulate energy. You can't end it. You can't end what's going on. You can only change it, the vibration and energy of it, what's creating what being now in the time that is the appearance of it that's showing up and that's your reality that you're living in if that makes sense right and so it's changing that and so what doctors do is they deal with your symptoms on that level so it does have a part and role when you get to that point but 
if you have your divine connection, you can tune in and ask source what it is that you need to heal that problem. And then that will come to you just like it did to me with the anise oil. Right. And so it, it is a true thing. You just have to have faith in your own self and source. Bring that back in to yourself because you are the one. Right. Not other people. Right? They're just dealing, they're only taught to deal with things on a certain level. They're not there to help heal or cure you. They're not a God to you. Your own source is a God. Right? They're the systems that are placed, put in place to catch you on a plan B <laughs> when, you, when you're out of your own true self. And so those of you who have gone before you that are your master teachers and yogis found their way by, partic by, by not participating in the ignorance of today's world. They've seen it and they stepped away from it. And so can you, if you want to be enlightened and wake up, right? Otherwise, start, keep playing in a play, <laughs> right? It's not what they were special, because they weren't. They were just like you and me. There's no special God or special Jesus that's out there, right? We're all children of source, the creation, right? And so they're, they were smart enough to know that that's not the way. But it's ignorance that leads you outside of yourself to not know yourself, right? And that's important. That's been written on buildings. Know thyself. And you will be, you'll find the way. Not listen to others and let them tell you the way. And so that is the way. Tune into the higher self, your own true self. Unless, of course, you enjoy the suffering of the world and want to be a part of the experience of it and the creation of it. As it is today and how it has affected everything and everyone, Wars, killing, abuse, and suffering, and forcing people to be what they're not meant to be. The human one. Right? And so many of us are awakening up now as we are shifting consciousness on the timeline of what is being to something new, which has many called the, the new earth or the fifth dimension. And so the view is much different than where it is on the third world, which is human consumption, which is humanistic world and vibration. And so what do you do to get there to the fifth or the new world? Meditate, be present, and learn about vibration. Take up yoga, practice being with yourself, eat healthy, relax, be present, redevelop the divine connection, not the false illusion, which is the connection outside of yourself. Work on the intuitive abilities, eating, eating healthy. Help to find yourself in a deep dive within yourself. Your soul connection, listen to the internal guidance of source that has been given to you, not by others, right? So stop following other people, right? Others who don't know themselves <laughs> to guide you in different directions, right? And so if you're listening to people who don't know themselves, it's the blind leading the blinds, right? Now, for me, I'm not trying to be anybody's savior. I'm not trying to be anybody's guide. I'm just trying to lead you back to yourself. Guidance, meditation, understanding, tuning in, understanding your frequency, who you are beyond this concept, this reality. Because that is my role here, is just to help you guide you back to yourself, not to be your savior, not to be your teacher, not to be anything else, but just to help guide you back to yourself, not outside of yourself. And so what this is all, what this is part of, right? Because it's been my journey. And so when you have the journey, you teach it to others, right? And so again, if, you, if, you, if this isn't resonating with you and you feel like you need to go another journey, then that's your journey. That's your choice and that's your path, right? If you feel like you want to turn in, then this is a great way to get there, right? And so when you go outside of yourself, you're in the wrong direction. So that is why it is there to help guide you. But when you are not listening to your inner guidance, you leave yourself, which is separation. You're choosing something other outside of yourself than who you truly are and you're in guidance and your intuition, right? And you're replacing that with source. And so when we turn in, it's the evolution of self-guidance from a pure space, not a, not a convoluted, like a tainted one right, by others, right? And so that's what they needed to get there. Doesn't mean it's what you need to get there, right? And so all these voices, and like I said, this may not be your path, right? It may be for some, but not all, because maybe you need to, to learn some other things along the way before you get to this point. And so maybe you're, you need to go on that path. 
but then that'll path will lead you back to yourself. It's always going to, you are the one, right? So you may, may not resonate with this, and maybe you will at a later time. It, it'll be, you need to take a path before you can even get here, because you need to understand something else before the coming back to yourself, right? And so all these voices in your head that you hear need to be cleared so you can tune into the divine frequency, not your human consumption self, which is the illusion. And so those are not yours. They are the ones that have been accepted into yourself, which is the reality, right? So you've taken these thoughts and beliefs of who you are, who you believe you are, over your divine connection, right? You've replaced it with source. And so when we turn in, it's the evolution of self-guided from a pure space, not a convoluted one. I was just saying, so all those voices you hear in your head need to be cleared. And so you can turn, so that way when you, you can turn in, um, those are not yours. They are the ones that you've accepted into your reality and belief system, which has created the separation because you listen to them. So for instance, when you're listening to all the thoughts in your head, you are becoming them because you believe that you are them um, versus understanding that these are just thoughts passing through you, which goes back to you're not your thoughts, you're not your um, belief systems, you're not your reality, you're not your emotions, you're not the body, right? So everything is just passing through, right? But when you listen to them, become them because you're grabbing onto it as your identity, your falsehood, your beliefs, your creation. And so you create from there, which is the evolution of the consciousness that it is being at that moment in time, which is part of the collective consciousness, right? The thoughts that have been before that you are up until now in your reality, which you've accepted, right? We've all accepted certain things about ourselves, which aren't true because of the liberation the belief systems that we're seeing outside of ourselves. You know, the constructs of being um, faults or not, you know? So like, for instance, like when you believe that you are needing to be like thin because of the subjected appearance of what people believe is beautiful, instead of being yourself, you put yourself in a projected reality that's not true for you because your, your awareness of yourself is at a certain state and time of evolution to be something else where you are at another time, but you put yourself in the false perception of where you are that you're not a match to, which is the resistance to yourself and the energy and vibration of it and not being love. And so then you feel bad about yourself, right? And so you're taking yourself away from source and being divinely true and loved by yourself, by who you are, where you are in, in the form that you are. They cannot because a lot of people are totally fine and healthy and being in the state that they're being where they are and the weight that they are or the appearance of who they are, and then it's the society's social structure that makes it, that takes on like this whole perception that you have to be in order to be accepted by others. You know, this is what we're supposed to be. Um, when is it, when in fact it's not true, right? And so it creates this suffering, which is a dissonance within yourself that brings about the suffering that it makes you feel bad. And so when you feel bad, you become more separate and separate and separate from source, which is the, the lack of love for yourself um, and the further away you become. And then so you try to find all these things that take up the part B, the plan B. You know, how can I do this and how can I do this to get myself to be there? So I feel better at myself, but then do you really? Do you really feel better about yourself? Or is it just the appearance that you feel better about yourself? Feeling good and looking like that makes you feel good because others, that's acceptance of yourself that you took on as a belief system. When appearance isn't everything, it's how you feel within yourself. And so many people are in a state of awareness to where they may have disabilities and may not be the most beautiful person in the world, according to society, but are happy within themselves. And that's what makes them beautiful, right? And so it's really about where are you with that, right? What is your perception on that? And that's just an example, right? And so that may lead us into, you know, doing stuff like um, taking medications um, because we're un unhealthy or unworthy in our perceptions and reality versus what we really are because our bodies aren't all meant to be one thin person, 
right? <laughs> and that's very shallow. You know, we're meant to be who we are, which makes us different and unique in the world. And just to trust in what it is that you're supposed to be and where you're going and just tuning into your true self, right? And so just having that understanding is huge for you, yourself, right? Not to be a limiting version of yourself and just accept yourself and love yourself for where you are, who you are, and what you look like and how you're showing up in the world, right? Because all those voices you hear need to be cleared out. You can and turn and then just turn in. Those are not yours. They are the one that they're being accepted into our reality created as a part of the separation and you're listening to them creating them and that is the mind not the consciousness but the mind has a consciousness which is its job <laughs> right and so uh, which is to remind you of your choices that you made and so when we're listening to the mind the collective consciousness we're listening to the mind of others and who we are which we've ruminated over with which what we believed in what we created what we've experienced and under unexperienced in blah 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 right and so the mind has its own job which is the liberation of yourself because it reminds you of all the things that you've accepted about yourself and it plays out over and over and over again in the regime of creating these things and in that is of your choosing you get to choose and so everything is choice there's no victimhood you choose the voices in your head right you accepted them and so as you've accepted them throughout your lifetime whether it's uh, I'm unworthy, that you're being told by your parents or your friends or whatever it is that you're listening to. These are things that are seeds that are being planted that's being created. And if you're focusing on them, you're creating them more and more, you know, of yourself to experience them and be a part of that, which is the illusion that you're going to play out at some point in lifetime as it evolves. Right. And it just the mind just reminds you of things that you've accepted for yourself. Right. And so it just plays out over and over again until so you clear them out. Right. And then you have your divine connection, which is your one true self. Right. And so because most have this issue, they think that they're crazy because they think that's them. Their mind is them. But the mind only has a job. It's separate from you. But it's to set the mind of creation um, that's creating itself to be there to remind you of what you're thinking, what you're doing. It's not there to hurt you or be critical or anything like that. It's just a reminder of what you've created or what you're planting the seeds and so the mind is an interesting thing so when you understand the concept of this you'll be able to start maneuvering it and um, working with it on a better level um, of awareness instead of trying to fight it right and just allow it to pass through you because you're not your mind you're not your body you're not your emotions right and so it's just a framework here that we're picking and choosing from to be of it, which is the creation of all things that's been created before, which is the human collective, the human consciousness, the collective, right? And so um, just being come aware of that is um, just life-changing, you know? Um, it just helps you to move, maneuver, you know, through the, the evolution of yourself so much easier and better with that awareness, right? And so... A lot of people might think they're they're going crazy because they're hearing all these voices, but these are just voices that you've accepted as you've gone through through lifetime and accepted as yourself that you're trying to live up, which is the potential of being that's generated and that's within all of us. We have the potential to be something, and when we're being something, we're creating from that point of view that we're trying to be something that we're not, and so that's the evolution of emptiness, and so that's the suffering. Right? We become separate from ourselves because we're trying to be this thought and thing that we're not um, and not allowing ourselves to be who we truly are, where we are, what we're doing, and who we are existing as, um, as a part of source, the soul, the creation. And so there's this liberation from the separateness when we can come back to ourselves and center and be the liberation of ourselves, not others, and not let other people try to heal us or free us from those things by trying to take outside within, but be within without. Right? And so uh, when we're without ourselves, you know, it becomes the reflection, not within, right? So it's when we're within ourselves that we're showing up in the world, but we're not the reflection of the outside world, which is there's a difference, right? It's the separation of that and the reality. And then so um, when you're thinking and you're hearing, like a lot of people will hear a lot of these different voices in their head, but they're not yours, and if you tune into that, you'll have that realization. They're not mine, 
right? And so when it, because it's attraction, and Abraham Hicks talks about that, when you have a thought, other thoughts join it. And they're not yours, right? But we start to believe in it because we keep hearing it and we keep on that path of that, um, which is your suffering, your limitation, not your liberation. And so when, it's only, when it is only the limitation of the human consciousness and constructs of you that doesn't exist, um, that doesn't understand itself, right? So you don't understand yourself and how you work, and so that's why you suffer, right? Because if you understood yourself and how it all works and exists, then you understand it and you won't be a part of the constructs of it, right? You would stand there and observe it as it's passing through you. And so the limitation of the mind is expansion of itself as it is being, which is taking over. So to expand the Christ consciousness, which is not Jesus, um, or the cross, which is, is source, not Jesus, we have to mind our own minds, which is not a like a mind field where we blow up <laughs> at each other, but one that we pick the weeds from it, right? And so that's emptying it. Empty your mind of what's not true, of yourself, not the falseness, not the beliefs, not the conditions, not the separation, but the oneness, right? Bring yourself back to the oneness, right? And so come back to your divine source, not Jesus. So to save ourselves, not others, which no one can do for you, you have to do it yourself to make it to the next level of being from the human consciousness to the expansion of awareness, right? Which is the rising of the chakras to the highest states of being in one, two, that is a secure, not ourselves in survival. So when we're in the human, we're in the survival, trying to figure it out, trying to maneuver, trying to grab onto things, the part B plan, um, trying to be everything that we're not, as whereas if we're divinely connected, we're connected to our true selves. Right? And so we say to you to be consciously connected to source every day over the next coming days to be present Practice presence in your awareness, not the division or separation. And so the message really is to start putting back source into everything, right? Bring back holistic healing in with medicine, healing um, universal laws with education, source back into the practice of your divine connection, um, not being disconnected. It's not a way to raise the vibration of human consciousness. It is a dissection in pro reprocreation of ignorance when we're passing it down to others and our, our children, right, to be of the human genetics and genes and confusion that it brings with it. Um, but to understand and know yourself, know thyself, um, not live in a state of solitude and lower vibrations, but higher consciousness and being. And that's pretty much what I have here for today. And it's going to be a long one. So thanks for tuning in if you want to uh, share, like, and subscribe. Do appreciate it. Um, and again, if you have any um, questions or anything, drop them below and I'll be able to uh, talk about that topic. Happy journeys.